So Rob, um, tell us a little bit about what, what Cellcom is doing with small cell and, and femto cells. Well, we're very active in it. We've been studying it for a few years. We're now rolling out this year with, uh, on a commercial basis, both to our residential users, the small business users, and an enterprise solution. And we find that the small cell is going to give us the opportunity to provide seamless service for the customer in and out of the house. We're excited about it. Um, you spent some time in Korea. Can you maybe share with us some of the learnings that you saw there that you might be able to bring here with respect to venues and other types of facilities? Well, certainly. First of all, you have to remember that the, the small cell uh, competes a little bit with Wi-Fi. The big difference there is that Wi-Fi is a battery drain. Uh, the second thing is, is that Wi-Fi is a contentious product. Um, my next door neighbor might have a Wi-Fi. Somebody else has a Wi-Fi. They're on the same band. They're going to interfere. I've gone to a lot of conferences where when I turn on my Wi-Fi, I can't get registered. Why? Because there are too many people registered on the particular thing. And when I do get through, my quality isn't very good. Whereas cellular, we own the frequencies and we're able to do a lot more. When I went over to Korea, I got a chance to go into a Starbucks. While there, I saw an LTE small cell along with Wi-Fi. Everybody in the place was using LTE. The reason for it, uh, Wi-Fi, yeah, you're getting a few meg through. On LTE, they were doing 60 megabits down and 30 megabits up. Pretty incredible when you think about it. The other thing is they've got plans where there are lower rates for their LTE, uh, kind of a flat rate for it, but they have tremendous throughput with it. The other thing that's happening now is you're starting to see it in venues. So let's say you take an example that uh, you have a, a high school sports game and you're, you're at that uh, venue. Well, you now have maybe a couple hundred people or more all in a very tight area. If they're all looking in and hopping on the internet, you're going to have a little tougher time getting through because your tower outside is serving the entire community. By putting a small cell in that particular location, now everybody has quality service. And if they start getting overloaded, just put another small cell in a little bit further away. When it comes to LTE, DAS don't work that well. The problem you've got is that the longer the distance of the DAS or the cables to feed that DAS in the antenna system, the more delay you have. LTE doesn't like delay. They like to see very, very fast return. So again, a small cell will allow you to do that, and it's more economical to do. Take one more step in there and say, okay, I've got that high school team and I've got three kids shooting video of it. Well, why not take, give you the opportunity to have a chance to see what's on each one of those videos while you're at the game looking at it. Store the information locally, look at it on your phone, and see the score as it's happening from one end or the other end, if it's a football game, the other end of the end zone, or see it from the sidelines. It gives people a whole new reason to go to a game and an opportunity for us to not have that traffic go all the way back to the network because it really is local. Well, Cellcom's always been known as an innovator. Can you walk us through maybe the deployment of small cell, femto cell, and then layer in the content creation and, and that user experience? Certainly. What we're doing first is we're rolling out the residential. We're calling it a home zone. And the home zone is, is a situation where anybody that's in the house now has five bars of service. Even if the nice thing about CDMA uh, for fem to cells is that there's no problem with the outside network. You're able to be, I could be right underneath a tower and still have great service. That helps me as a carrier because now I'm deloading that tower from the service in the building. But if I'm further out near the edge, they won't give it up to save their life because now they have five bars of service and they didn't before. Where we want to take that next is we want to take and put some services on there. So as an example, let's say a customer or my son walks into the house. When he walks into the house, it would be nice for us to know he's home. Why not send a text message as soon as he walks in the house? For that matter, why not send him a text message early in the morning and tell him to do the dishes and do his homework? Well, if you deliver it early in the morning when he is at school, he's going to forget it. But if you set up the fem to cell in such a way that it delays the message and sends it when he walks into the house, bingo, you got it. 20 minutes later when he shows up and his girlfriend shows up, we get another text message saying, girlfriend's at the house, no mom and dad. 35 minutes later when 75 people show up at the house, we say, party at the Reardon house, call the cops. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting concept if you think about it. Having presence on a fem to cell gives us a lot of opportunities. In the business, uh, let's say you put it at a car dealer. Well, you can have a situation now where somebody calls and wants to talk to salesman Charlie. Well, you could dial a four-digit number and reach him on his cell phone and put the call through. But if salesman Charlie happens to be on a drive 
and he's running around the countryside, you sure don't want that call to go through when he's with a customer. So why not, as soon as he leaves the building, like an in and out, simply say he's out. And now the call goes to voicemail. And you don't have to do anything. You just automatically send it there, but the network knows to send him to voicemail because of where he's located. Let's talk about content. You talked earlier about the, the football game where you have multiple users uploading content and be able to see multiple streams. Uh, why haven't carriers bundled in content as a general rule, and maybe you could share your thoughts about uh, bundling in content uh, with packages and some of the things you're seeing in other parts of the world. Well, content's a tough animal, and it's, it's funny. A good friend of mine is a um, chief engineer for a TV station, and he and I were talking, and he says, you know, you guys own the delivery. We own the content. We should get together. He made the comment that uh, one of a friend of his tower went down. He had three watts worth of power going out. But the cable company was able to see his signal, as was the um, uh, satellite dish companies. 97% of his customers had service, even though his transmitter was down. He said, this is a sign of where it's going. We don't do content. We don't do it well. We don't do it easily. So that's why we're not doing it today. Now, when it comes to a high school football game or a college football game or something like that, of a tier three or, or whatever, they might create it themselves and have no way to distribute it. Again, we're distributing ability. If we put a cash server with a small cell at their location, now the people at that venue get a much better experience than the people at home. In some cases, there is no home experience for them, but for the people, if they're just recording it for uh, the coach, why not make that available for everybody else while they're in there? So they would create the content. We stay out of that business, but it gives us an opportunity to play there. Rob, thanks for your time. You're welcome.